Well, a short night for me, all done. Uh, fourth with Purple People Eater. It was not a long day at all. We're about 10 minutes to post till uh, Scioto Downs comes up. And I wanted to run through our day. It wasn't a busy day. Now, I did have some horses I trained today. Uh, for my partners on Foxy Seaside, she closed the gap pretty quickly on Gorgeous Package this morning in training. I trained her at 58 by herself. She was very, very strong. We let her hobbles out. We've been working with her. We changed some gear. She is much, 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 much better than she's ever been right now. Today was her best mile for sure. I trained LT Troubadour. I trained I Don't Play Nice, all of them in the race bike. Uh, very happy with them. Now, the one interesting thing today was, you know, High High Hopes has been frustrating. She can give me fits a little bit. Took the hobbles off her. She qualified with her hobbles on. But 2-7, where are you going to go? So I'm trying to figure a way to get her more comfortable and safe. Went out today to try and train her. I'm saying to myself, I'm going to go mile on 2-4 today. With her. Makes a break in the first turn. I pull her up. I'm like, oh, serenity now. Uh, I turn her again. She runs again. I came in and said, okay, that's enough. Put the hobbles back on her. And uh, take the bandage off her behind. Put boots on her. Okay. Uh, I go out. I go to score her down. She feels great, but she did make a little break. I'm changing her hobbles. And as I'm changing her hobbles, I just get the hobble to where I want it. And this guy goes by me training. She sparks right up and just drives right up. I, I, she takes off. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm just going to. I've already, I've already tried to train her two or three times, so she's worked up. She's done some work today, and it's very hot out. I'm going to go a good half a mile with her. <clears throat> so I follow the gentleman and around the turn into the stretch. I pull her off his back, and she takes off a hundred. Start my watch. Trots through the first turn, never puts a step in. Trots through the second turn, never puts a step in. Trots through the wire. I click my watch. We just want a half and 58 and two. Perfect. So she's going to make a trip over to the Meadows next Tuesday. A lot going on right now, trying to fix up all these little things and get all these horses tightened up and get a real good look at them. I was happy with the way everybody trained today. Um, I don't play nice, 2-2. The 30 and a piece on the end of it, he wasn't strong, but he scoped good. Um, we're going to draw his blood tomorrow. He wasn't bad. He wasn't bad. I might actually take him over and requalify him at the Meadows also. As you can tell, as we get closer to the next generation in stake season, I want to see these horses stretched out a little bit. So I don't play nice. May actually go there. Aunt Lily may actually go to um, the Meadows also. Foxy, she said, sweetheart, put that down. Stop being silly. It Stop. Is. It's sunglasses, sweetheart. No, it isn't. Shh. It's a map. Addie, sit down. It's a map. Hey. Sit down, please. So, um, the Meadows on Tuesday. Uh, today was good. Now, also, I told everybody in regards to George of the Jungle, had a, a back and forth with one of our clients, Greg. He was worried about the hobbles slowing the horse down, or, or, or maybe do they, um, you know, are they playing a role in him getting tired? And obviously, the next step to that was if, if they are, could they be contributing to his bleeding? Well, he did bleed before we put the hobbles on him. Uh, just showed a drop of blood before. Has always showed a drop of blood, a drop of blood, a drop of blood. And I told everybody, it's as simple as this. Draw an SAA test on the horse. If there's no infection in his body, then you know unequivocally it's allergies. And if it's allergies causing them to bleed, it's a very difficult thing to get away from. We're dealing with that right now. Flash fly, her allergies have flared up quite a bit. And I told Tim, you know, Tim's treating her and treating her and treating her. Fine, train her Saturday. Train her as hard as you want Saturday. Scope her after. You know, I'm almost certain I know what's going to happen. You're going to see mucus in there. But the problem is, is what that leads to, right? If you keep pushing when their airways are, are constricted like that, it's going to lead to bleeding. It has to. There's just no two ways about it. It almost inevitably will. So, uh, George of the Jungle will go on Lasex. Dominic sent me a screenshot today saying that Le Lasex is now offered at Dresden. The reason this is important is because the next grassroots is at Dresden. So that is good. Uh, I know he told me about uh, don't talk uh, don't talk about Bruno has a uh, prospect at Kawartha Downs, and I'm almost tempted to say why don't we go to Dresden instead? But I don't want to pay two hundred dollars to drive him all the way down the highway, you know, draw the six hole in Dresden and catch one or two bad horses in there, dirty horses in there. Oh, that would really suck. So I think uh, George will make the trip, and maybe uh, Bruno will make a trip out to Kawartha. I guess. Um, 
I talked to Dominic again this morning. Now we're done talking about George. We got it all cleaned up. He's going on Lysex. He's going to race in Dresden. Uh, I talked to Dominic and James and said, listen, uh, all gas, no brakes. Obviously, I'm, I'm a little heated. I don't want the horse making brakes. Uh, so this is what we're going to do. We may tinker with his shoes. I'm, I'm going to talk to Dominic tonight one more time and talk to our blacksmith. He's convinced that the open-toed shoes on a deep track is causing him to get pacey. Absolutely could be the truth. So the best thing we can do is maybe put a half-inch, half-round uh, square toe up front, closed-toe shoe with a square toe up front, and maybe some borium on the toe, or maybe even go as far as to put a few corks on that toe just to make sure he's not slipping. That's a possibility also. And to have James go down and train him. And I don't want him trained in 2-4. I want him trained in 56 or 57 on Friday, and then he will qualify on Tuesday. That's the only way to know that we are ready to go going into the qualifier is if they are ready to go. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to train him up and requalify him on Tuesday, and hopefully we get the job done there. Uh, brace for landing. I told you guys in a video already, I'm going to go and drive brace for landing on Tuesday. I'm going to go over to uh, the meadows with some horses, qualify the horses on Tuesday morning, get in the car, and drive all the way to uh, all the way to Ontario, race brace for landing, and come back to Ohio. It's just the way it's going to have to be. And, and that's not me taking a jab at anybody. I don't really care. What's done is done. But we need to get this train back on track in Ontario. And, you know, I see the emails and I see people being a little frustrated. But I, as I said today in the video, just step back and look at, take a look at what you're actually seeing here. You're seeing horses that aren't supposed to do at Mohawk get beat up at Mohawk. That's what you're seeing. So we need to do a better job getting a proper team in place. This is a top facility. This would literally be like taking horses from Yonkers or... Northfield Park and racing them at the Meadowlands. It's just not going to end well for you. And that's what I've positioned us in. That's I have to take at least most of the blame in that. And I think the, the good news is that we can rectify that. We have some of the best Ontario bred two-year-olds that I've ever seen in our, in our uh, possession uh, getting ready to race this summer. So that's a great start. We have some useful horses. Drebin, I think, is going to be there for a while and going to be a useful horse. Hopefully, we can get Brace for Landing back going. Hopefully all gas, no brakes can fit somewhere in the middle. We have uh, Yo Mister, who's now in the 18,000 class on Monday. Thank you, Mohawk. We have Looks Like Money um, there. So we have some of the foundation in place. We just need to paint the walls, and put down the carpet, put some put some toilets in. That's what we need to do for our, uh, for our house in Ontario, so to speak. So that's where we're at right now. In regards to today... Um, you know, one of my partners, Pete, said, Anthony, we can't sell Victory Blue Chip till he gets a better line. You know, the guy didn't drive him good. The guy drove him perfect. You have the eight hole with a long shot going into the race. You just do the best you can to snag a check. He didn't get one, but the horse raced pretty good. He raced well enough. He's coming over here. He's going to race in the condition claimer. Non winners a one, 15 claimer, non winners a two. His tag's going to be 18, 7, 5, and he's going to race right here. His next start at Northfield Park. He didn't drive bad. He did a good job with the horse. The horse And the horse didn't race bad. I wasn't disappointed with Victory Blue Chip at all. The exact same class, Great Bet, is going to race in over here. The class that Jayport Beach Boy raced in over here. We just need to start finding better places for better horses. And as I said, repopulating uh, our Ontario barn. Because it, it has nothing to do with being a flagship, right? It has everything to do with being having the right horses for the right job. And the right horses for that job are good horses. So that's where we're at with them. Um, no free lunch is about to go behind the gate if you already didn't right now we're going to watch him and uh, purple people eater I thought race good you know I didn't get away I wanted to get away in the two hole I got away in the three hole I didn't want to be first over until late I got that wish but she bit off a little more than she could chew getting into last turn I almost lost her she stayed at it and usually when she gets beat up for even in a, a short period of time uh, period of time in a race she cowers and she'll let go of you but she actually come back to life and trotted as hard as she could to the wire she's an okay filly that's doing pretty good things. So I'm pretty happy with what I saw tonight. I would have been happier with a win, but I'm not disappointed with her fourth place finish. I thought she raced rather well. Victory Blue Chip, same type of thing. Did what he could. And hopefully we have some luck with no free lunch. But a lot of really cool things coming up. Still flying high from, from our qualifiers yesterday. Got some qualifiers tomorrow. Jason Merriman's going to go with Cadeau. He's going to go with uh, Rose Run uh, AJ. And he's going to go with one other horse. I can't think of it is, but I know there's three in the qualify. I trained a bunch today. We're going to train a bunch of back on Saturday. Some of our Ohio breds you may see show up at the Meadows qualifiers on Tuesday. We're getting the summer of 2024 started, and it looks like we're going to start with a bang. Fingers crossed. 
horses in Kentucky are settled in. They're going to start training, getting ready. 12 days, 12 days till our first stake races, and that all kicks off. Seven of them kick off in uh, 12 days in Kentucky. So with that, I'll let you go. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your night. Take care.